Hi, Dr. Goldberg here. We're continuing now our infectious disease lecture series. Today we're going to talk about cat and dog bites. Uh, we see our share of these. Uh, you're going to be seeing them in the prompt care or in the emergency room. Uh, you have to know about how to treat them. You've got to know a little about the pathogens, that type of thing. Know that 50% of dogs and cats do have certain bacteria uh, in their um, mouths, including Pastorella multacida or multacida, however you want to pronounce it, uh, or uh, Capnocytophaga. Uh, both of these are organisms that can be extremely pathogenic, especially, especially in immunosuppressed uh, patients. We want to differentiate dog bites from cat bites. Cat bites tend to be puncture wounds. They've got sharper teeth. It tends to be a bigger incidence of septic joints with cat bites, uh, especially in the sp smaller joints of the uh, hands and the feet. Where dog bites, are, they tend to tear. Uh, there tends to be more maceration, but the uh, wounds are not quite as deep. Uh, the pathogens, of course, are going to be from skin flora on the patient, as well as from the saliva from the dog or the cat. Got to watch for joint involvement, septic joints, or osteomyelitis. One of the things I see uh, ER physicians do wrong in these patients is they tend to sew the wounds up too tightly. Uh, you got to let these wounds drain a little. Uh, our treatments of choice are going to be Augmentin or a second generation cephalosporin like Cefuroxime orally, usually for a good 10 days. They have to be closely monitored. Uh, they have to, the wounds have to be cleaned out very well in the ER. And then you can just use a topical antibiotic uh, over that as well. When human bites occur, we watch for a bug called Iconella carodens. used to be called Bacteroides carodens. It's a facultative anaerobe resistant to clindamycin. Again, Augmentin uh, tends to be a good drug uh, for uh, when this organism is suspected. But other mouth flora and mouth anaerobes can be problems, such as Prevotella species or other Bacteroides species. Uh, generally, we don't see a problem with rabies, of course, with dog or cat bites in the U.S., uh, but other animals are an issue. So we have to watch for, you know, in our bats, <clears throat> exposures, raccoon bites, skunk bites, fox bites, or coyote bites. Certainly rabies is, is an issue in those uh, types of bites as well. That's a whole nother lecture, but I wanted to uh, just give you an update on the pathogens that we're looking for in uh, cat and human, cat and dog bites, and then a little about treatment. Thanks, Dr. Galbrig, signing off.